that generation. From brutal offshore drilling platforms all the way to the homeowner and hobbyist, Lincoln Electric's 125 years of experience provides the quality you need to get the job done right. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Lincoln Electric. We didn't just go a little bit bigger, guys. We went a lot bigger. Last week on the Newfoundland Hobbyist, I took you all through the purchase of my new building. An exciting new opportunity, an incredible expansion of what was a difficult process finding out where the new home of my knife shop would be. And we found it in this building. We got to work right away setting up and developing this building into the finest knife shop that Newfoundland has to offer. New room construction, purchase of new equipment, new tools from beautiful companies like King Industrial and Lincoln Electric. We are just so very well set up and we dove into some knife work. And this shop has just been incredible for my knife work. But if you recall, we have a whole other half to this shop that is undeveloped and that we have to find a purpose for. Well, we have made a decision on the front half of that building, and it's an exciting one. Let me walk you through the crafting of our new automotive and power sports service and fabrication shop. Now, a couple different things led to this decision. Many of you have been following for the last few years I've been working through a big flatbed truck build project, which has really amped up my interest in, uh, in the automotive world, both in the fabrication side, and I, if you've been following that project, a lot of fabrication work. I mean, just every type of automotive work possible was involved with that project. Besides splitting and open an engine, uh, we basically did everything else with that truck project. Now, if you've been watching even longer than that, you know lots of incorporation of power sport type work on the channel. We did a, a DR650 motorcycle build. We've had multiple motorcycles on the channel. ATV, side by side, and we've incorporated some work through all of it. Also been building on my fabrication skill set over the years, building that up, and, and my partnership with Lincoln Electric, and, and there's just been a lot that, that's been building together. But you know what? Even with all of those things and interests, this shop, is not going to be my baby to run. The shop isn't for my handiwork, but rather for my brother. Through a lot of talking, a lot of planning and prayer and, and communication with him, we decided this, this would be perfect. We live in a pretty distant rural area here where there really isn't a lot of uh, automotive service. There's nothing in power sports. The closest power sports service center is about an hour and a half from here. Uh, and when it's that sparse, you can imagine how busy places get. The closest automotive service station to here is about 40 minutes away. And it's a regular, like just for an oil change, brake job, or anything like that, you're waiting weeks for an appointment. So there is a dire need for service work and just the fabrication offering has to come with it. And we're just working on setting up one sweet service and fabrication center. And uh, it's just, I think it's gonna be just a great setup. We have the crew in motion and construction is beginning. And we're gonna need quite an amount of construction to make this happen. You can see rooms being built on the top level, rooms being sheeted in on the bottom level. There's just a lot of work to be done here to make this business happen. Right. 
Although in a lot of footage you might just see me working away, making something of this scale happen in a reasonably timely manner takes a team of people. It takes a lot of help. And so I'm just so grateful for all the people that have pulled together to help make this happen. My family who support me, it really does take a team to make this happen. One of my goals with this automotive service shop, the service and fabrication shop, was not just to make a place that was good enough or just good enough to perform the work, but to actually have something really attractive, modern, stylish, something that looked great, had a premium feel when you walk in the door. And so that's what we're working on here. We have a plan here. Don't worry, it'll come together. Now to an install an automotive lift, all our lights have to be much higher and that's what we're doing now because this lift install is going to be the biggest obstacle, the biggest job of getting this business started. I went with a low rise or a low post lift because the sides of my building, it's a dome building so it's like this. So the taller that post is, the further you have to, to come out from the wall. I wanted to have a full two lanes here in the shop. So that was an obstacle picking the right lift. Once we had the lift come in, I had to figure out how to get it off the truck. So luckily there's a, a couple guys here in town. They have a big front end loader and they have forks for it. So I was able to time everything. Everyone worked together. They were here on site when the truck pulled up. And so we had the lift here on the floor now we were facing an even bigger obstacle, which is the biggest obstacle. So this big, beautiful slab here, the whole length, the whole, the entirety of the building, the entirety of the slab is run with water lines in floor heating, which is really nice. But as you can imagine, poses a big problem. These lifts mount with huge bolts drilled deep into the concrete floor. You can see where we're going here, what the issue is. So in a floor that I didn't pour and I don't have a map on, we have to drill a substantial number of large diameter holes deep into the concrete and not puncture those water lines. And once they become punctured, once you drill down through one of those, you have a big issue. Now we have a big wood boiler furnace here. Pipes run under line into uh, some water manifolds that's piped all throughout the floor. This building has been vacant for a number of years. All those water lines are dry. We're on a well up here. This floor system takes about 600 gallons of water. So there's really only one way to fill up that boiler. The fire truck is here today, guys, filling up the, the boiler. Because we need to find where those lines are in the floor. So going through it now. So now the fire department has been here. We have the boiler filled. We have all of our lines bled for air. Everything's all set up, ready to go. I light a roaring fire in here and we're on standby with those circulator pumps running. And I'm waiting with a thermal 
imaging camera. Now instead of mapping the entire floor and then going around the lift where do we want it, we put the lift basically where we figured it should be. Ran in with the vehicle a few times, felt it all out, got it pretty much where we wanted it. And then we just had to watch the floor in that area. You can see guys, we're starting to be able to see those lines there in the floor. That blue dot right on the crosshairs there now is right where the paint can was. I just kicked the paint can over. But you can start to see, that seems like the hottest run, the easiest to see. It looks like it runs straight over direct from, from the manifold. Hey? I'm just going to put a little funny mark there. Okay, try, because it's going to disappear probably when you get, uh, okay, now I see it go over that way a little bit more. Hold on, I'm going to come over a little closer to you. So you can see the lift base here. You can see, there we go, right there. There's a line passing through. There's three lines right there. One, two, three. Looks like we're starting to get a few more come into sight. But that, there's the manifold. So those are the straight runs right from the manifold. Had we have taken a Gamwana, we would have drilled a number of bolts right straight down through water lines. Uh, but we were able to see on the thermal imaging camera, you can see there now, just where those lines were running in the floor. It was worked really nicely, uh, just as we wanted it to. We were able to see those lines running to the floor and we just needed to, to shift the lift around just a few inches to get it right in the sweet spot. Now the lift came with all metric bolts. Could not find the right concrete bit anywhere because it had to be, uh, what was it, a M m160 or something like that and of course everything here for in concrete terms is, is all standard dimension so i had to go and get all new floor bolts before we could install Now my brother single-handedly did all the uh, assembly on this, putting all the pumps together, running the hoses, uh, the cables and all this stuff. Um, I did the electricals, all wired in, filled up the pump. By the way, odd type of oil, so it took a little bit. We had to, to go quite a ways out of town and, and get just the right oil because it uses something that's uncommon and wasn't able to get around here. So it's just all of these little hiccups and when you're in a rural location, those things can take so much time. You know, the closest place I could get new new bolts of this dimension was uh, two, uh, two hours and 15 minutes away at this one, one hardware store in particular that had it called around and called around and, and found a site that had something that could suit uh, something of this scale. At that point, it was time for the big moment, the trial run, so I brought in my, uh, my little car. Uh, we went with the lightest machine we had in the fleet. We just said we'll play around with that. It's the least valuable machine, so in terms of setup, if something did happen, uh, wouldn't be a huge issue, but took our time, sized everything up, watching everything, checking everything. Um, and everything was just flawless. Our first lock. Oh. We've been using this lift since. Just a couple hours after that testing run, uh, we threw Dad's full-size crew cab Ford up on there. My brother did a rear brake caliber and replaced some bracketry there, I believe. Which one you say, say? 
King Canada has been bringing quality machinery, tools, and equipment to the North American market for over 38 years. They offer innovative products for all applications, for the industrial and commercial setting, as well as the homeowner and hobbyist. King Canada is a sponsor of the Newfoundland Hobbyist. Let's take a break from inside the building and do a little property maintenance. This was a job to save the foundation on another external building on this property. And I just thought you would love to see my grandfather's, now belong to my father, old John Deere. Back inside the shop, we are coming along beautifully and we've crafted a place now that is very nice. Exactly what I had hoped it would be. Premium feel, a beautiful fit and finish. Everything is getting tailored out. And we're starting now on the equipment side, bringing in tooling, getting all set up for opening day.
One of the final pieces of the puzzle left to do is hang the sign. We'll do more with imagery later on as the business progresses and I want to add more information. But for right now, just a professionally designed logo with our title hanging on the front of the building to let people know who we are. Although I'm still constantly buying new equipment, tools, and supplies for the shop, the shop is now open and is a running business, and we have received great support so far from the surrounding towns who need this service. Of course, just as with the assembly of this workshop, it takes a team to run it as well. And we're learning each other, we're learning this process, this new business. It's been very exciting to put this in motion, to put a few months planning into motion and start to see some of the fruits. And so this is the shop here guys and it is messy right now because we're at the end of a work day and we had a, a multitude of vehicles in here today for exhaust work and and welding and welding on an ATV a rear swing arm repair and it's just a whole bunch done today I can't even think of what was wheel bearings and brakes and just all kinds of stuff going on here and it's been like that and the, the support from the towns here has been wonderful and it feels wonderful to be able to provide a service as many of you know watching in these rural areas in Newfoundland there's not a lot of services offered so it's just wonderful that we have the support of the surrounding communities and we're building what seems to be a wonderful thriving business here that again meets the needs so really excited now, unlike with my other business where I already have all of my suppliers and my relationships formed and I know them by first name, a lot of them, and they know me when I call up on the phone to order steel and things like that, with this brand new business, I have to form that network all over again. So you have your tire suppliers and your leaf spring suppliers and your parts suppliers and exhaust is another place and there's just all of this logistics involved with setting up a business like this but it's just been a ton of fun and as long as we have the support behind us we'll keep going thanks so much for watching this episode i really appreciate it i hope you learned something i hope you're inspired to get out there and uh and try something for yourself take a few chances take a few risks put in some long hours and, uh, and make wise choices but if you didn't draw any of all of that from it i hope at least you were entertained by the episode. That's it for this week. Make sure you tune in next week to the Newfoundland Hobbyists.